All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, play fast football. Uh, I had somebody ask me a question the other day, uh, defending power from two-by-one open sets, 3-3 three, three stack, would you spill it, would you box it? I'm going to give you my theory on how you could do it both ways, why both ways can work uh, if the technique is used properly, and I'm going to give you a little bit of clarification of what spill box is. Make sure you check out some of our partners, GameStrat, Sideline Replay Company. We use, uh, if you're looking for highly reliable, highly affordable, make sure you check out GameStrat, see why everybody's making the change. Dome hats, headwear company we use, Bishop Kenny High School, play fast football. Every other uh, head coaching job I've had in my career, I've been at four different high schools in my career. Every one of them used dome hats. Stock hats suck. Baker Sporting Goods Company we use for coaches' gear, spirit packs, our uniforms are distributed from there. They're in the shoulder pad world, baseball world, doing a lot of great stuff. Check out Baker Sports. Difference USA Ultimate Striking Machine. You get thousands of reps without needing a partner. They hook right up to the racks in your weight room. You don't need to teach somebody how to hold a dummy and provide leverage. It's just you and the Ultimate Striking Machine. If you want to strike violently, practice striking violently. Aaron Consulting providing recruiting, education, keeping the head coach at the forefront of the recruiting process. Eventually, uh, all colleges are going to come in. They're going to need GPAs. They're going to need test scores. They're going to want to talk to teachers and administrators, counselors. So the head coach needs to be in the, uh, involved in the recruiting, should be at the forefront of recruiting. Aaron Consulting is going to educate people on the uh, NCAA timeline, NCAA important dates, how to build your contacts with college coaches, all the things that you need to do, know about recruiting, you can get from Aaron Consulting, G E T. A-R-E-N.com. Check them out. All right, so I had a question asked to me about uh, spilling or boxing power from the 3-3 stack. We're going to talk about it from a uh, six-man box perspective. No movement, no slant and angle. I know a lot of people, when they play the stack, are going to move all over the place. For today's purposes, we're going to talk about what the difference is in spilling and boxing is, right? So when you talk about spilling the football, we're talking about first-level edge defenders, how they're going to play off of a down block, veer release, inside release with a puller, kick out, another blocker, blocker coming to them, right? So we're talking about spilling from a stimulus of my position maintenance is outside as a five technique, my visual key goes inside, all right, and now there's another block coming at me. Spilling means I'm going to have to change my position maintenance. So I'm going to go from an outside shaded five technique versus a veer inside release a block that is down towards the football with another block coming at me, I'm going to have to take myself from an outside position maintenance and make myself an inside position maintenance. And when I take that next block on, in order to spill it, I've got to wrong arm, wrong shoulder it. I need to make the ball go outside of me. So if the camera was a tackle, I start as a five technique. I am outside with my position maintenance and my alignment. When that block of the camera goes inside, I must squeeze and the next block that comes at me, I have to get underneath, take on with my wrong shoulder because we want the ball to work its way outside. Why do we want it to work its way outside? We don't want vertical entry. We want the ball going east and west, and we want to allow our players a chance to make plays. Now, the real reason we want the ball going outside, or even the bigger reason, all right, not only the vertical entry part, most defenses design their defenses to get the ball sent to a free player that is not going to be blocked. Okay, so if you've got a six-man box like this and a team is going to run the power play, you can assume that they are going to get, on paper, a bunch of these guys blocked. Okay, so the kickout's going to happen there, and they're going to bring an extra body as a pull. So you can assume that they're going to get the nose, the mic, and the wheel, backside cutoff hinge. on the, Those four players, you can assume, are going to be blocked. So how are we now going to fit the last two blockers, all right, to make the ball go where we want to? Well... Get it to a free hitter, we've got three players that fit first two blockers. So now, five technique squeezes, spills, which is going to make the puller go wide, all right? Unless they're going to try and run a gap power in which they're going to knock the spill out with the guard. That eats up that body. Now we should have extra players to make plays if they're going to run a gap power, knock the spiller out with the guard and try and cram it up inside. If they're running traditional gap schemes that we see more of, all right, when this gets spilled, the guard's going to take a wider path, okay? So now when the guard has to take that wider path, we need our linebacker, all right, to spill the puller as well. So the end spills and the backer spills. We want the ball to get navigated, matriculated out to the free hitter, all right? Defenses are always about trying to get the ball sent to a free hitter that can't be blocked. Offenses are too good nowadays. 
They're going to figure out who the free hitter is. They're going to find ways to get them blocked. They're going to find ways to change shift trade motion. They're going to find ways to get extra hats. They're going to find ways to read them in the RPO game. All right, so ultimately when we talk run fits, yes, we want to get the ball sent to a free hitter, but the best defenses you watch play in college and the NFL, guys at the point of attack are able to beat blocks and make plays because as a defense, if you are going to solely rely on getting the ball sent to free hitters, and that is the only way you can make plays, I think at some point you're going to run into problems because offenses are too good, right? But every one of us from this scheme playing middle of the field open, apex defender, to read, right? So if I had a corner and a safety back here, I want the ball sent to him. So if I spill with the end, now I'm going to spill with the Sam, all right? And we're going to try and get the ball sent wider, deny that vertical entry. Now, if I was going to box this theory, I'll tell you why I would choose to box it, and I'll tell you why we would fit almost the exact same premise, okay? Why would you box this? All right, well, I had two luxuries in my career where I was coaching defensive ends that were Division I football players, okay? One went to the University of Florida, one went to Liberty and is now finishing his last year at Duke, okay? If you spill a ball, you are almost essentially taking that DN one for one with a block and he won't make a ton of plays. Now, the good ones will find a way to spill it, ricochet, all right, pry back up the field. The good ones will end up making plays, that's why they're so good. But in theory, on paper, when you spill, that defensive end doesn't make plays. Eventually, your defensive end start to get pissed off when you ask them to spill because the play that they make by spilling is not a physical stat for them. It's a stat that the coaches know was a great play and a great job. But eventually, those guys want to make plays. So if I had really good defensive ends, okay, and, and they had great get-offs and they were superior athletes, if I ask him to box, I'm not asking him to change position maintenance off of an inside veer release from the tackle, okay? So when he gets that blocked by the tackle, I'm not asking him, all right, I'm not asking him to do anything different. I'm not asking him to squeeze that block. I'm not asking him to get inside the next block coming. I'm going to allow him to take the next block that comes, fullback or trapper, and I'm going to allow him to take it on with his inside shoulder, hard joint, Try to constrict the running lane, but don't change your position maintenance. Don't take yourself from a five technique outside shade and have to make yourself an inside wrong arm play. I want you getting off the ball and going. Okay? Now, when I had those two players, I used the term dent. All right? I don't need you to squeeze that down block. I need you to take the next block on as thick as you can, destroy it, and make a play. Because I wanted those guys making plays. I need to keep them motivated. I need to keep them active in my defense. Right? If you're using the box theory, it's similar. You're just not counting on that defensive end to make as many plays, okay? So you're still, with the box theory, you're probably giving up one for one, all right? The dent theory is the most active way to me that a defensive end can stay active, make a play, beat a block, all right? And that's what I chose to do with those two guys because I didn't want one for one. So when you box, you're probably going to get blocked, okay? But what you're going to allow that kid to do is play to his skill set, not ask him to change his position maintenance. Ask him to stay as a five technique. Stay outside leverage on the next block. Trapper, fullback, doesn't matter right now. We're only talking about power. Could be a guard on counter. Could be some type of long trap. Doesn't matter. Keep your outside arm and leg free. Make the ball go inside. Now, that's where people panic because they think the ball is going to enter vertical. Okay? The key to me is I'm going to do the same thing with the Sam that I did in the spill scheme. All right? When that guard comes... Now the guard's going to be able to enter a little bit more vertically, right? And that's the thing that people don't like. The guard entering vertical, the ball entering vertical. But I'm still going to do the same thing. I'm going to ask the Sam to spill the puller. Why? Because I want to get the ball sent to my free hitter, all right? In my mind, he's blocked and he's blocked based on the scheme and based on the offense. The offense has good players. I have to assume that within that gap scheme, they can block him and they can block him. Now, all the great defenses, at some point, these guys find ways to make plays. Whether they're under, all right, an angle that's too high, whether they're over an angle that's too flat, these guys end up making plays when you watch the great defenses play, and this guy ends up making plays when you watch the great defenses play, because I don't think we can always assume that we're going to get the ball sent to a free hitter. But that on paper, when you talk run fits, what are you talking about? On paper, based on the blocking scheme, based on the front and the coverage, this is how we should all fit like a puzzle. Well, if you've been coaching football long enough, you know that on an every play basis that your kids aren't going to fit everything exactly like it's drawn up on paper. 
all right? The fits become a lot more fluid, right? And the fits become changing all the time, where the backer second level might have to adjust their path and what they're doing based on what the first level did. And the third level might have to adjust what they're doing based on what the second level did, right? Well, if we box this theory, I think we allow him to be more aggressive in his get off and his technique and we let him do what he wants to do, okay? So if he boxes it, we still want to spill that puller because we still want to get the ball sent to what we think is the free hitter. That's what defense is about, right? So to me, I think you can still spill box, get the ball sent where you want to. The argument's going to be, if the guard can enter vertical, can the Sam spill a guard entering vertical, and can the ball make its way out to him in a box theory, okay? So remember, when we're talking spill box, we're talking first level edge defenders, all right, and how they play off of an inside veer release, right? Because if you've got a base block right at you, all right, there really is no spill box technique, all right? You might have a heavy technique, might allow you to go under a base block, all right? So if you want to look at it from that theory and you say, okay, well, if we were going to box everything and the end was the force player, all right, even base blocks, he's going to stay with his outside arm and leg free, all right? If you played him in a heavy technique, then the spill theory would mean to me, the way I look at it, and again, a lot of coaches aren't going to think about it this way, but if he's playing a heavy technique and you allow him to cross face the tackle on base blocks, well, it's actually kind of just like a spill technique. You're changing his position maintenance. You're allowing him to go inside and you're trying to get the ball to go one gap further because you know that offenses are going to prey on the open B gap. And you want to get the ball to not enter vertically and you want to get it sent out to where you want to get it sent. If we're talking about the stimulus of a down block, I think you can still box it and, and the trade-off to me would be, can the Sam spill the guard effectively enough to get the ball sent to the free hitter there? Okay? The trade-off is, I think I can get this kid in 22 years of coaching football, I think I can get this kid to get off the ball and box a lot better than I can find a kid that's going to spill. Spilling is a technique that takes a ton of work. It takes time. It takes effort. It takes a great D-line coach. All right? I think it takes repetitions. A lot of D-line coaches will tell you, look, it's it's... Just repetitions. I can get any kid to spill. And while I'll agree with that, it still takes a ton of work. All right? I would tell you that I think I can get any, any player to box. That's what I would tell you. I think I can get any kid to get off the ball, get up the field. Now, not run up the field and, and pass rush and, and create a 30-yard wide lane. I'm talking about maintain position leverage. To me, boxing is position maintenance. So when I box, I'm going to maintain position maintenance. I'm going to stay from an outside shade, and I'm going to remain an outside shade on the next block coming. But the term hard joint means when I do it, I'm going to close space as I do that, right? So the difference would be tackle and down block, run up the field, get kicked out there, and leave a ton of room. To me, the difference would be the position maintenance of a box player. I'm outside leverage. The next block that comes, I'm going to stay outside leverage, but I'm going to hard joint, and I'm going to constrict the running lane. I'm not going to do that. That, to me, would be the big difference. But I would tell you, I think I can get any defensive end that's an athlete with a good get-off, I think I can get them to box a lot quicker than I can get them to spill. All right? I still think that, that, that with repetition, with a lot of work, I still think with kids that play with great eyes, I still think you can get them to spill, and there's teams that do it all over the country, and they do a great job, and they win a lot of football games. So spilling is the safer one versus gap schemes because you feel like you're denying vertical entry. I still think we can get the ball sent to the free hitter if we box effectively, spill the puller, I think we can still get the ball sent to the free hitter. Because remember, spill box normally talks about first level edge defenders, right? So a lot of the times if you are spilling the first level, then you might also spill the puller to get the ball sent wide. Well, there's a bunch of defenses that will spill the first block and box with the linebacker, right? So in today's discussion, I'm talking about spill box, first level edge defenders. I'm not talking about everybody else. In the two diagrams I just showed you, linebacker was a spill player, all right, in both theories. Even when the end was a box player, the linebacker became a spill player. Got to get the ball sent out to the free hitter. That is what the run fit diagram looks like. We're trying to get the ball to the free hitter. At the end of the day, offenses are too good. You're not always going to get it to the free hitter, so at some point, you better find a way for guys to make plays. That's why I would, all right, lean with a really good defensive end, I would lean towards the box dent side because I feel like that's giving that kid a chance to make a play just in case I can't get the ball sent to my free hitter. 
All right, and when you talk about run fits, remember run fits is a theory on paper that coaches talk about all the time. Once the game happens, the fits are going to become way more fluid. All right, the fits are going to change all the time because the end that was supposed to spill didn't spill. That's going to affect the backer. That's why you always have to talk to your players. All right, second level fixes first, third level fixes second. The guys that are coming from depth should always be able to fix. It's the same thing in special teams. If you've got waves on kickoff going down and you never want to run down the same color jersey. So if that guy takes on a block a certain way, you don't want to run the same way he took that block on. You've got to find a way to recreate the fence across. All right, if you're on kickoff coverage, we got to find a way to recreate kind of that picket fence. If that guy chooses that and I'm behind him, I may have to choose and fix him to do that. It's a ball fit. Fix it drill. We do it all the time in our two man vice tackling drills. First guy's got an angle. If he screws the angle up, the second guy's got to fix his angle. So, football is a fluid game. It's in motion all the time. Run fits is a great term. Run fits is great for diagrams. When the game happens live, you've got to have kids that can react to all those scenarios. All right, so hopefully this uh, helps you guys kind of clarify spill box. Can you do both? I think you can do both. Most people spill. We've been a spill team for a long time. Um, but we've also had some years where we were a dent team uh, and I allowed my defensive ends to play uh, a little bit differently. I think you can get the ball sent. Again, what are we trying to do? Get the ball sent to a free hitter. I think you can spill it and get it sent to a free hitter. I think you can box it and get it sent to a free hitter. All right, it's your choice. Do it however you want. All right, to me, there is no right way, wrong way. It's whatever way you do, it has to be effective. All right, so. Uh, as always, guys, click that subscribe button, turn your notifications on. You know, every time we do a video like this, we go on YouTube Live. It was on YouTube Live Monday night. I had a great conversation with guys. YouTube Live, to me, is the best form of interaction in the offseason because it's guys asking questions, and it's me talking, but once guys ask questions, there's multiple opinions and multiple answers coming from the audience, not just me. All right? You've seen me do these videos for 10 years. You know what my philosophy is. You know what my take on a lot of these things that are. When we go YouTube Live, you're getting opinions from other people, which to me makes it the best form. So make sure your notifications are on. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Like the video, don't like the video. That's your opinion. I just appreciate you watching. As always, leave a comment. Any comment I see on my end, I will try and respond to. Sting8740, gmail.com. Uh, 20 hours of virtual clinics, private on my site, which nobody, the public can't see on my YouTube site. Email me, $15, 20 hours of football, 10 different clinics, all right, there's, uh, it, it's, and it's other coaches, not just me. There's a few of them that are mine, but then there's five or six other coaches in there. There's quarterback play and game playing. There's screen play. There's O-line run play, out of his tackling, defensive coordinator from Colgate, game plan drills and practice drills. Um, there's a bunch of virtual clinics on there. Staying 8740 at gmail.com, $15, 20 hours of football, pretty good deal. Get your hands on that. I hope your off season's going well. Clinic season's going well. Hope school's going well. We're on the back end now, matriculating our way, our way to summer. So please, everybody, stay in it. Fight the good fight. We're almost there. Um, we're almost to that, that window of the year that we absolutely love. So keep at it. Hope clinics are going great. Hope you're learning a lot of football. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast. I will see you guys next time.